All right. So shout out to Christian who asked for an update on the keyhole garden. Here it is. And if you're not familiar with what a keyhole garden is, this is essentially a waist high raised bed uh, with a central compost bin. Uh, the purpose behind this is that it uh, requires less water and less fertilizer. And so very efficient style of raised bed gardening. Um, this area is eastern exposure primarily gets about somewhere between four to six hours of sun per day on average i water this um, once every other week and i just put the hose on stream and i put it right here in the central compost bin and let it run for 10 to 15 minutes and that's it and so you can see that um, i mostly i just have kale i've got a sweet potato plant back there but uh, I mostly um, have kale we harvest this fairly frequently and um, the kale looks pretty robust um, I will admit that I did add some fertilizer early spring when I transplanted these these uh, plants and so that may have helped as well so but that is a keyhole garden and I do have a helpful tutorial on this but also there's a really great um, uh, a scientist out there her name is dr deb tolman she's got lots of very helpful information on this because you can do this style of bed with many different materials it doesn't need to look like this uh, but yeah definitely worth checking out if you if you haven't heard of this type of bed and you're in a drought uh area or you've got some fertilizer restrictions i mean fertilizer is very pricey so might be worth checking out so if you found this video helpful so far, please consider liking and subscribing. It does help other viewers like you find this channel. Thanks. So next update is in my little veggie garden here. And you can see my tomato plants are looking quite uh, rough. And, um, and I'm okay with that, honestly. I, you know, it's about end of season, for, or it is end of the season for them. I'm gonna need to cut all tomatoes that are still on the vine and then I'm gonna chop these plants down in hopes that I can get them to um, come back for the fall. And so here's my plan for that. Here in a couple of the tomato plants, I've got sort of this, I don't know if you consider this a sucker, but I have this sort of this like secondary stalk that's shot up from the bottom. So I will, here in the next few days, I'll cut this, this main stalk that's been growing everything and I'll let this take over. It's obviously got an established root system I've got another one like that here. So I'm gonna cut that main stalk here and um, let this take over. I don't have sort of that, that uh, sucker at the bottom on this one, so I'll have to figure out um, how I'm gonna prune this down to allow for it to rebound in the fall. Behind me here, I've got my Malabar spinach, and I have been like just throwing this at people because I have so much of it. It has done very well in the heat very little pest is issues i've got a few you can see a few areas here um, where things have eaten at it but for the most part it's done very very well i've got two this was two plants and so that was probably like one too many but um you can trellis malabar spinach as well because sometimes i mean you can see it's like growing on the ground and things like that but excellent uh, heat loving plant it's a little bit different than regular spinach. It almost, it's kind of got a bit of a, a little bit of a mucusy texture to it. So um, I don't want you to think you, when you bite into this stuff, it's like regular spinach is a bit different. So, but definitely uh, worth trying, very healthy and loves the heat. Here I've got my bell peppers. These haven't really done great, but I did put them in kind of later in the season. I've got a few I got a few peppers on the vine here or on the plant here um, and my my daughter is our bell pepper lover so that's she enjoys those um, here I've got my cucumber plants and between the heat and this massive aphid infestation I've been fighting uh, they've quit producing and so I have been shooting this, these plants with water every couple of days to try to rinse as much of the aphids off. I've dropped a bunch of diatomaceous earth down on here. You can see my little duster. Obviously you need to do that when it's dry. If it's wet, it's not effective. So, um, 
And then I've also used the stalks from the Malabar spinach to kind of draw them. You know, when I knock them off this, they're on the ground and then I kind of draw them to that so I can just throw that away. But uh, the struggle is real. You can see, you know, despite all that, I've still got a ton, a ton of aphids here. And so um, I do have uh, damsel bugs on here. So these are beneficial insects. They do eat aphids. And so they've been working real hard, getting nice and fat and happy off of this whole situation. But um, I don't know if these will be able to rebound or not, but I will keep at it. Here is my corn. All right. And so I harvested, okay, so I planted this from seed in this, in this uh, bed exactly uh, 90 days ago. And the silks emerged about three weeks ago and the ears are now ready to harvest. You can tell they're ready to harvest because when you, you push your nail into one of the kernels, it kind of, the um, substance that comes out is more milky. If it's clear, they're not ready. Um, but I wanted to kind of share some things with you. You may, when you look at these ears, you may notice that there's a little bit of, t some of these look quite tapered, so quite narrow at the top. That one's not as bad, but let me see if I can find a, for instance, like this one here. So this looks pretty, it's kind of underdeveloped just in general, but it's so narrowed at the top. And so what happens is when the silks first emerge, the first silks that are emerged, as I understand it, are for the bottom kernels. So if those get pollinated, the, the bottom kernels will form. If, and then several over several days, the remaining silks come out and that primarily is for the top half of the corn. And if those don't get pollinated, you may end up with a situation like this where you've kind of got almost like this tapered corn. And so um, I've got quite a few stalks like that. I thought I did a good job hand pollinating, but you know, you live and you learn. This is my first year with corn. You can kind of see another ear there. Um, this one, I don't even know. There might be two kernels on that bad boy total. Um, I've got a, got a good one here. So this one's pretty well developed, uh, not too tapered. And then I got another good, you can kind of see this one here. And so that one looks pretty good. So I will harvest this all over the next few days. And I've got my heart set on making some um, elotes or Mexican street corn. And, um, and then I'll probably pull these plants because they are just like, they're just all over. They're just falling over. Like we're, we're done. Um, and so you kind of see, I've had to support the corn plants as well from all the wind. And so, but uh, this was my, like I said, my first go at it and it's, it was really good. I'm definitely going to do it next year. Here I have uh, just a few more cucumber plants. I have a few strawberry plants in here as well. Um, they're pretty shaded right now from all the corn. So uh, there's not a whole lot going on, um, but th this cu these cucumber plants are putting out flowers and they just look quite a bit healthier. And so we'll see, um, we'll see what these do. So click on this next video if you're interested in seeing how my landscape beds are doing in terms of native versus non-native plants. Y'all take care.